I'm just starting the recording. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm ready to rock and roll. <laughs> so uh, I'm Marianne Aschenbrenner. I have a company called Waterlink Web. I want to thank Doug, especially Doug Ewan, especially for uh, today's presentation, because maybe, I don't know, three years ago, two years ago, uh, Doug did a presentation on Paid Memberships Pro for the Portland WordPress Meetup. That's when we were meeting in person. And that introduced me to this plugin. And um, at the time, I didn't have any membership sites I was working on. So I just kind of tucked it away in my memory bank. And um, when opportunity came to build a membership site, this is what I decided to use. And um, so anyway, that's the um the title here using paid memberships pro how to and why i'll talk about why at the very end but this is really a, a demonstration of how to use it i have it on two sites and they're very different from each other so the first one first i want to talk about is the actual plugin is paid memberships pro there's free version that really does a lot i mean as much as you might need for a simple website. And then there's paid versions that do, that a paid version that does a lot more. So uh, free is complete, includes uh, recurring payments on various payment get gateways, includes integration with uh, several email services, includes an opportunity to set an expiration date on the membership or for the member to cancel on the next payment date, all that's free. Uh, includes subscription delays if somebody wants to delay their subscription. It also includes WP Bouncer. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that particular plugin, but it is a nice little plugin. And if you don't want somebody logged into your site um, from multiple accounts, how do I explain that? Let's say somebody shares their login information with someone else and the other person's trying to log in at the same time uh, using that same information, that same log information, WP Bouncer bounces the second person off. So it, it kind of keeps people from, from gaming the system on you. Um, but the paid has more things. It has 65 more add-ons. I'll talk about some of those. I haven't used all of them. And uh, also it has a support ticket. So you can really, they're, their support is excellent. And that's something else called advanced code recipes, which include, uh, and I haven't used these yet, but they do include, I don't know if you ever have, uh, have a news feed that comes up and, and you can read part of a news article, but then it says to read more, you have to subscribe and it kind of starts to fade off. It has a code recipe for that. So, um, I saw somebody with a hand up. Any questions so far? No? Okay. I think it was me giving you a thumbs up. A thumbs up, okay. <laughs> yes. So I liked the, the WP bounce feature. I did I hadn't known about oh, that. Oh, you've used so that before. You. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a nice little and it's a free little plugin you can add to your website. Um okay, well let's let's oh. Laura's got a question. Okay, what other questions? I had a question on WP Bounce. Is it just, um, uh, here, I'll put my video. Is it just two people trying to log in at the same time or is it looking at, what's it looking at for? It's looking at your login information, your login name and password. So if let's say I'm logged into the website as, as, a, as a subscriber, as a member on a website, and I have shared my information with a friend of mine. So she can do that too, right? But if she tries to log in at the same time I'm logged in, it'll bounce her off. So it's just logging in at the same time is pretty much what it, two people with the same credentials at the same time. Right. Okay. So it right. doesn't keep you, you could log in from your home computer and your work computer, and it's not going to stop you from being able to do that. Uh, but it does, it, two people using the same credentials at the same time, it'll catch it and bounce one of them off. Okay. Which is, you know, uh, that can happen. You don't want that happening if you can avoid it. Okay. This is the first website I'm going to talk about. It's breakingbarlines.com. 
and they do online music theory lessons. Um, and it's geared very much for adults. Uh, the Aaron Bernstein, who owns this company, has taught music lessons for years and years. Um, and he, you know, is has worked for a long time teaching music lessons and developed this entire music theory curriculum. And this website has done a couple things for him. He's got some subscribers, okay? But it's also because of this website, uh, Clark Community College has hired him to teach music theory in the classroom. And apparently Lewis and Clark is, he may be working for them next spring teaching music theory as well. So um, sometimes having that a website gives you more cred, more, more credibility, and it has worked for him. But I'll tell you a little bit about how this works. So this is the first part, top of his page. And then if you went from music to theory, music theory lessons, if I click there, you would see a whole series of different kinds of lessons. There's fundamentals, there's scales, there's, there's percussion, there's all sorts of music. There's like 40 or 50 music theory lessons on here altogether. So if I click the fundamentals module, then there's a whole series of lessons under fundamentals too. And if I click the first one, the musical alphabet, I get this. It says join now. <laughs> so it won't let me in to the actual lesson unless I've joined up. Uh, if you go straight to his uh, membership account and you go to sign up, this is a membership levels page. It's the only one we have visible right now. Uh, monthly subscription and you can see how you can have, edit your profile or you can cancel your membership that shows your checkout your confirmation all this all the information is right there for each member if they're logged in and this is the back page of that membership levels page so when you add the the plugin it actually creates this page automatically. It creates all the membership levels page and it adds this shirt code. This is information we've added. We want people to know that this is going to renew automatically, um, the first payment and so forth. And how do you keep pages from showing up? You just do this. If you don't want a page to show up, you click one of these so that only people who have purchased a membership can actually see it. And that's how you do it. It's that simple. So it's hidden unless you click this. So going back to this page, okay? On this page, this has been clicked. So the people can't get into it unless they've logged in. Okay. Uh, what else did I want to show you? Okay, these are the different um, lessons we have set in. We have two free lessons set up so people can kind of see what those look like. This is a Breaking Bar Lines monthly subscription. And we have another option here, uh, Clark Community College where he teaches. Uh, is paying for the student's first month of the subscription. And so, and that's part of their class fees. So we added this other monthly subscription where the first month is free and after that they're gonna be billed. And that was just turned on while people are signing up in the classroom and then they were done with that. And so we took it away, did it again. Um, but this is what, the, what it looks like when you add a membership. So this is a regular monthly subscription and you put in all this information about it so people will know what it says and then what the client wants to say. And this is further down the page, it's $15.95 a month and it's going to uh, renew. If it's recurring, you click that. So that's how much it costs initially. That's, three, that's how much you're gonna cost every month. You could change that. You could have a $30 initial, then it's only $5 a month, you know, if you wanted to do that. Uh, there's no limit to the billing cycle. And then um, that, you know, that kind of shows you how to set it up. 
well, what does it look like under members? So I, I blacked out a bunch of stuff here because I didn't want to release any private information for any of his, any of his uh, students. But you'd have a username here, then there's first name and last name. If they picked a display name, that's going to be listed. Their email is listed, so you're able to click that and you could add them to an email list, which email uh, is very a very good way of, of being in touch with your customers. There's a billing address, it includes a phone number if they put that in. Um, and this is the first, this is a student who Clark Community College, the first month free monthly subscription. And then here's a regular monthly subscription student right here, these two. Um, fee $15.95 per month. And this is $15.95 plus $15.95, which shows that it's every, they pay the initially and then afterwards as well. And this uh, shows the date that they started. Okay. And so it's, what's nice is you can track your customers really well. And then this is the actual orders page. So every time someone renew, renews every month, they get the new order. So this particular uh, student renewed November 1st. If we scrolled back to October 1st, she's gonna be on here as well. So um, that's, that's how that works and you can see you know, the username, how they're paying, transaction IDs, the date, what kind of level it is, et cetera. Any questions on breaking bar lines yet? So I'll go into the next one. Maybe I should just do it at the end, ask questions at the end. Any questions right now? Yes, I have a question. Okay. Is, is there, uh, can you uh, automatically set it up for a renewal on an anniversary date rather than a calendar yes. date? Yes, you can. So like, <clears throat> like one year from the date they mm -hmm. signed up. Okay. You can. And Let me kind of give you an idea of how to do that. Let me find the right. Okay. So this right here. Check if this is a recurring subscription, okay? Oh, okay. And then instead of one month, you do years. So okay. they would renew automatically a year later. Okay, if they don't want to automatically renew, or if they just want to send a check? There is a, another integration to allow pay with check. Okay. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so that's this was pretty simple. Uh, we did go with the professional level on this because there are a few things he's doing extra. Um, but I'm gonna show you the next one. This site is more complex. This is an entirely different website geared towards young children, pre-kindergarten and kindergarten age. And um, Colleen, who is, a, is just a fabulous, gal she has taught for years in the tiger to alton school district and um retired and set up this whole learning program for little kids to learn social and emotional learning um and it's geared towards teaching kids how to be patient and to take turns and to follow the rules and and it's uh, frankly there's a lot of adults who could probably use the review <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is her, this lower, you know, this is the top of her website page, and this is down a little bit. Again, it's really geared towards kids. It's a short little um, informational about this week's lesson. So, you know, every week they post a new lesson, you click read more, and you go to the lesson. And on her, I changed, she wanted to call it subscription instead of membership. So I just changed the words to subscription there. It's, everything still works fine. Um, and when you click subscribe, you get these three options because she has set it up. There's a single teacher subscription, $9.95 a month. 
or a school or district can sign up all their pre-K teachers, all their first grade teachers, and they would buy a seat for each one. And they can do that on a monthly basis or they can do it on an annual basis. And she gives a little discount if you subscribe annually. And um, this is where the pay by check thing comes in. Um, and we're using that on her site because the school districts want to pay by check. They don't want to uh, give a, a credit card out. So once well, I'm just going to go over this, and this is all this is uh, school district subscription. I'm just going to show you how I set this one up. Um, so you click here. This is the back end of the website. We saw this before in breaking bar lines under settings, membership settings. These are the three different subscriptions. This says free, but it really isn't. It's only free for the administrator who's setting it up. So I'll, I'll show you how it works. But we'll go through this one, school and district subscription. Uh, single instructor, monthly school and district and annual. Okay, not actually free. Okay, so if they are subscribing and they kick, click the second one, they click this one, school and district subscription. They go back there. They will then go to this page and all the information is on there that talks about it. And purchase your subscription seats for your teachers at $9.95 each. This is where I set it up. It's under settings, school and district subscription. I wrote all that information in there. Um, check to include this message in the membership confirmation email. You want them to have that. The initial amount collected is zero because that's the actual school district subscribing. You don't, they're only buying their seats for their teachers, not for the secretary or the principal who signed up. But um, this is a recurring payment, $9.95 a month. You go down, lower down the page, and there it is, purchase subscriptions or seats for your teachers at $9.95 each. Uh, the one up above, let me go back to that one. This one here, not the annual one. The only thing it'll say different is, it will not be a renewing, it's just a one time. And the reason we did it that way is the school district got a grant for their students to take this program and it's a one-time grant. So she doesn't know that they're gonna need to want to renew later. So this is unchecked there. And then that is $90 uh, for, their, for their cost, okay. But going back to here, this is the second half of the page of the settings page. There it is that purchase your seats for your teachers at $9.95 each. It shows up, shows it, it shows up right here. So you just, it's kind of fun to put this together. You can kind of see where everything works. But for these additional ones, I added a code snippets and used this code. And this is one reason why you want to use Paid Memberships Pro. They have tremendous support. So one of the add-ons is, of course, a subscription for as a gift. Okay. So I put that add-on in. I watched all the videos on it. I wrote the code. It almost worked. <laughs> I contacted them. I told them what I'd put in the code. They responded within 24 hours and said, do this instead. Tweaked it a little bit and it worked. <laughs> so that is, it's like that kind of support. It's just very, very, very valuable. Okay. Another reason why is all these different add-ons. So in, when, the when it gets to the end of the school year and the teachers who are subscribed individually don't want to continue to be billed in the summertime, right? They can cancel our next payment date. And it has a thing to do that. Um, 
And this is another one I used on this one, a custom level cost uh, add-on. I haven't used this, it's free. This is with the free program, but it's some sort of courses for memberships. I haven't tried it out. Somebody else should try it and let me know how it works. Maybe, maybe talk about this in your, in your uh, good, give a presentation on it. Um, reason for canceling. I took, put this in because I want my clients to know why someone cancels. And I think it's a good feedback. So when you go to say I'm canceling my membership, you have to actually give a reason. It won't let you cancel until you've done something there in that, in that box. Um, and then here's the sponsored members add-on. That's what I use for the uh, a little SEL so the school districts could buy memberships for their clients. And um, questions. Yes, I think that, uh, who, has a, who has a hand up first? Uh I, I've got my hand up. Uh, yeah, but about that, the gift membership, as you, you described. Um, uh -huh. uh, I, I'm not, so is that, they're, they're just granting it to someone else? Uh, to Yeah, so what they're doing, it's in her situation, it's a school district had got a grant. Yeah. To pay for their pre-kindergarten and kindergarten students to take this class. Or it's just it's just like a, a five minute class every day. Okay. okay. So there's a there's a video lesson. On, I I should actually go on the website and show you. They're just so freaking cute, with puppets and animation, and it's so funny. It's so sweet. Um, but so they take this little you know sit down in the classroom and here we we do our little SEL now and we talk and it's yeah. you know lessons about sharing or being patient, things like that. And um, they, they purchase that for their, for their classrooms. And so basically when, uh, when so I'll, I'll walk through it on the website. So, so well, well, if I could, Marianne, so uh, like, who, like who sets up an account, the account then for these gift members? School principal or the school secretary. And do they set them up for like uh, students or? Uh, they set them up for each classroom. However, there are parents who are also subscribing okay. that they were given us a, a subscription. Okay. For the little kids at home. Yes. And, and so essentially no money changes hands, if you will, right? Either by check or. Credit. Yes, it does. It does. Yes, my client gets paid. Gets so paid oh, they okay. can they can take they can pay by check because we added the check payment issue in there. Yeah. And basically it says you know, they say, well, they pick their payment method, they pick I'll pay by check. There's a little thing that comes up and says send it to this address. And once your check is processed, you will be added. So my client receives an email that says so-and-so is paying by check. And so when she gets the check, she logs in and you can go into the membership settings page and she marks it as paid. Okay. And then they get an email that says, here's your, your link. And so basically there's a special link with a code and in fact, they don't have to use the link. They can just give the code to everybody, to all their teachers. And so every teacher would go to log in and it says, what's your discount code? They put in okay. a discount code and then that teacher creates their own account. Yeah. So the okay. teacher That's has their own, their own email. Their, they can use their home email or their work email. And they created their own account and they use that discount code. They're never charged. And as long okay. as, yeah. as the district is paying, they're good. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, th that's what I was kind of going towards is why why not use a discount code. code yeah, for so they do receive a discount code. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I do. I we use this on on uh, my website. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. What other questions do people have? I got one here. Hi, Marianne. It's Doug. 
Uh, the question I had is regard to those paid add-ons that you showed there. Some of them are paid and some of them are free. Yes. Uh, what is, how are each, do they have a specific price point for each one? Or can you just say- No, it's, it's $297 a year. You get them all. Get them all, okay. So you can't pick and choose what you want then. They get everything. <laughs> you get the free ones. Yes. I mean, you get the free version. Yeah. And uh, you still get a lot of add-ons. Okay. In fact, on, on both my clients, I started, when we were building the site, we started with the free version. And then they wanted to do something extra, <laughs> something yeah. special. Yeah. So we had to sign them up. Okay. All right. I'm glad to see that they actually have a council account also, because I just ran into a subscription that I could not cancel. And I had to actually send an email to them to say, please cancel this, you know, <laughs> so it's good that they have that in there. Okay, thanks. I like, I like, I mean, it really is also a, a, a delay the subscription thing that you can do. You know, if you want to, like, I don't want to pay the next month. I'll skip it for a month. There's something like that you can add on to. Oh, that's good. Okay, thanks. Okay. Next question. Uh, Dean is next. Yeah, hi, Marianne Dean. Um, on the the uh, discount coupons that you're that you're giving, they're giving um, the the principals giving. Uh, how how do you account for the billing of that? You just, uh, the principal says, I want to buy 15 of these and you bill them for 15 or, or is it automatically calculated somehow? What it does is it asks for how many seats you want to buy. And, and that's so, part of the paid membership pro. Yeah. So I'll show you how it works on, on the outside. I'm going to share my screen again. Let me go to here. Share that. I'm getting my Zoom, but we're actually going to go to paid memberships. I mean, a little S E L. So, um, if I wanted to subscribe, okay, and let's say I'm going to select the, I'll do, I'll select this one where I'm going to have to send a check or I could pay by whatever. I have to fill out my username, et cetera, et cetera. How would you like to purchase number of seats? So the first seat, so then I, I could put anything up to 100 seats, one for each classroom I have. And here I got a check, I get an opportunity to pay by check. So if I paid by check, it's, it's something else comes up that tells me where to mail the check. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Next question. Uh, Sally is next. Oh, hi. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I'm kind of unfamiliar with a lot of WordPress. I'm supporting a nonprofit who has WordPress as a website. And if, if we move to putting our membership online, which is something that we've been considering, um, can the data be exported? Yes. And what kind of for file format is it? CSV or Excel or? CSV. Okay, great. Yeah, great. And so in effect, there's a button on there, export. <laughs> so yeah, it's easy schmeasy. Thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, so you could export the da data. I, I, I didn't show how to do that because I, I don't want to show all the students' names, but yeah, it's easy to, easy to export the data. That's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Other questions? Uh, Richard's next. Uh, yeah, uh, have, uh, I'm looking at um, the integration with MailChimp right now. Mm -hmm. Does, um, are you familiar with, with that at all by chance? I have that actually set up on the um, Breaking Bar Lines website, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I haven't haven't tried haven't tried to play around with it or anything yet. But uh, um, is, is there anything too difficult about it? Or uh... let me. You know, there's not. <laughs> and okay. basically, when they sign up, 
Their email goes in the MailChimp. Okay. All right. That's yeah. Kind of, that's, kind of that's, what that's... I'm looking for. <laughs> so, and, and then, and then what, what about then, like if their membership expires or is canceled? To... It doesn't leave MailChimp. Doesn't leave. You'd okay. have to edit it yourself. I see. Okay. Um, and that's something I let my clients handle. I don't really set up their mail services. I'll make suggestions and I'll help them test it. Um, but I, that isn't, you know, they have to be able to set that up themselves. But I do know that what's nice with like MailChimp and some of these other mail services, you can people put in people into different groups. So if somebody signs up online, that would be one group. If you yeah, added them yeah, manually, yeah. that would be a different group. Oh, okay. So, okay. Thanks. All right, uh, Dorothy. I guess along the same lines, um, <clears throat> what kind of an acknowledgement is sent once a member subscribes and pays? They get an email, uh -huh. and in fact, you can edit those emails. Okay, for each, I mean, I want a, like a standard email response. Yes, there's a standard that. email response that goes out, uh -huh. and uh, it shows you how you can edit a little bit of that. You can edit what it looks like, like the background color and so forth. So it, um, but yeah, it, it's a standard email that goes out. You can edit, you can add more to it. Um, usually we te I test it with my clients and they look at it and I, I, you know, I'll sign up in the sandbox and I get it and I send it to them and they say, oh, let's tweak this, and, you know. But yeah, and they get a standard one. And also the, the client, the, the owner of the website gets an email as well. Okay. So <clears throat> well, that's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that was it. Well, what kind of a form uh, would be sent? Is it, uh, could you use a, a Divi form? Or is it strictly by uh, an email plugin like MailChimp or MailGun or? Um, the email comes from the website from, from Paid Memberships Pro. So that is not related to MailChimp. But you have to set up something for them. Not to really. Oh, it comes right from the membership uh, form. Okay. Yes. It comes, and, it, and it'll <laughs> have uh, the, the return email will be the address. I think the email address of the site administrator or that set up something like that. I can't remember exactly what we set that up, but it comes from the from the client. Okay. That, that's how ours is set up is like from the, the admin uh, of the website. Right. Well, she, um, so it's she, not, she, yeah. So it, maybe the, the question about MailChimp confused you and that's okay. Um, you set up the MailChimp or one of the AWeber or one of the other add-ons on there so that when somebody signs up, their email goes to your MailChimp account. And then later on, you can send emails out to everybody and say, hey, um, you could have it set up. If, a, if you had a paid account in MailChimp, you could have it set up uh, that as soon as somebody signed up, they received an email, another email from you saying, oh, so glad you're up. You know, you, so they get one from the website, WordPress, and then one from you. And also just following up with your customers, I think, um, you know, sending an email out every month, you know, I'm so glad you're a part of our, of our school or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, it's just automatically that that would be done separately through your MailChimp account. And that would probably come from the membership chairperson. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather, okay. But you say the, um, it comes <clears throat> when they first sign up, it, it comes from the administrator or the uh, webmaster or from something? The, from the website. Uh -huh. And it'll be, I think, the return email is the site admin, I think. Uh -huh. Trying to remember. Okay, thank you. 
You're welcome. All right, uh, Winnie. Yes, um, I'm wondering how easy it is to include um, images, visual images. Okay, images. I'm not seeing any on any of the slides you're showing us. Okay, images of the products. Um, I'm part of a watercolor association and so it's all about paintings. Tell me what you want to do. Um, I'd like to have a lot of um, our members uh, relate to, to beautiful paintings and I would like to include them on various pages. Okay. So well, what you... As okay, what I think you would do Winnie, is um, you would put the images in the pages and then members could log in and watch, see those images. That brings in the PMP stuff. Yeah, I think, um, oh, are you back, Marianne? Uh, you're muted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think to answer Winnie's question, I'd probably put the images in on the pages of the website, have them there, and then members would get an email that says, oh, we have new pictures up, and so people could then log in to see the images. Does that make sense, Winnie? Yes, uh, I think so. Right, so the, the, there would be members-only pages, and to see those, those pages, they would need to log in. And you know, another, another thing that um, Paid Memberships Pro offers for free is integration with BB Press. And, um, oh God, what's the other one? It's like it adds like a Facebook kind of feature to WordPress so that you can have groups of people on the website who all kind of interact with each other and talk to each other. And Pay Member Shops Pro integrates with those two as well. And that's the free version does that. I haven't used it, but I, I know it's available. Has anybody else used BB Press before? Uh, we, we use it on our website. We have the, the plugin for it too. So uh, we sign, like when people join, they get signed up to the forums um, automatically. And... Okay. Okay. So I think um, someone just mentioned it in chat, uh, Buddy Press, uh, Feline mentioned. So, so there's Buddy Press and there's BB Press. So I think yes. Buddy Press is the social networking thing in the and BB press is uh, like a forum bulletin board. Okay. It, it integrates paid versus pro integrates with both in the free version. So that'd be worth I haven't I haven't set it up. I'd have to play with that for a while to get it all together. But other questions. All right, uh, Tara is next. Oh, you're muted, Sarah. Um, so I work with Winnie at the Watercolor Society, and I think that what Winnie is trying to say is we have people who submit paintings to get into shows. And I think that she what I think what she's asking about is if we wanted our members to be able a couple times a year to submit a couple of images so that they could be juried into a show, is that possible within the membership? Uh, would membership do that? Would membership allow that? Why not? But they'd have to email you the pictures, wouldn't they? Yes, um, I. but I think what, what, what Winnie is, what we have now is we have built a page where you go in and you say, you know, my name is Joe Smith and this is the size of my image. And then you upload, 
it, you upload the image onto the website and it kind of tucks it away. And um, I think I think Winnie is wanting to replicate that and um, because the one that we have doesn't work, it's very old. I've done that, it's a different, it's not, I've done that for another client it's not paid memberships pro it's a different plugin and i forget the name of it off the top of my head um send me an email and i'll get you the name of that plugin okay just send me an email and i will i'll respond i just have to look it up and i yeah it's pretty easy to set up and people can in fact upload images on it it uses gravity forms so you can set up a form that says your name, you know, where they have to put in their name, their email, whatever they want to say. They can put in a paragraph about their picture. They can upload an image. It can take PDFs, JPEGs, PNGs. I mean, you can limit the number of things it will take. And then they upload it and then you receive an email that says, oh, you got this. And so then you can log in and look at all of them. So yeah, but that particular, that's Gravity Forms. Yeah, it's a user registration with Gravity Forms and it's a paid add-on for Gravity There you Forms. go, that's what it is. <laughs> I knew it was something with Gravity Forms. Yeah. Yeah, I've used it a couple of times, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, along with what Tara, if I can go ahead and speak, this is Winnie again. What Tara was talking about is really important for our organization, but um, I'm also interested in having um, visual images built into many pages of the website so that it's quite beautiful um, and not um, our members are visual people that look at things as opposed to reading words. So um, I'd like to build that into the website so that so that it's um, very attractive with images as well as words. Um, you know that, that WordPress has a block format for adding images and everything. All the content is added in blocks. And, it, and you can, once you put in a, like an image block, you can make it load wide or even full width. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I mean, you could make a series of, of really beautiful pictures on your website, just with a good modern WordPress theme and, and using the, the Gutenberg block editor. What, what was done? What was that? What block editor? Well, it's, it's Gutenberg. They, okay. I, now I don't even think they call it that. When it came out, what year did it come out? 2018, 2019? Uh, it was called the Gutenberg block editor. Now it's just the WordPress block editor because that's, it's, it's what WordPress is, has developed to become. So it, we didn't originally start out with that, but now we have it. And um, I think it works like a charm. I can, you can make, I can, I'll experiment with images. Do I want this full width? Do I want it wide width? You know, how do I want it to show up? Do I want it to the left with information on the right. You can do all those things. And just, you could have a lot of pictures, just a little bit of information on the right, you know, or underneath it if you want. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I wanted to mention something. Uh, so there's the developer toolkit add-on. Um, have you used that at all, Marianne? I have not used the developer toolkit okay. add-on. So, Tell us about uh, it, Doug. Well, so there's a bunch of stuff I haven't used, but one thing I think that's important is if you're using Paid Memberships Pro on a site and then you make, and it's active where you have actually have members, and then you make a staging site or uh, a maybe even a local site to test, mm -hmm. uh, if you let that run, uh, it'll send membership expiration emails. So the developer toolkit add-on will allow you to stop those, uh, the cron jobs, which are recurring things that'll send emails. And it also allows you to redirect all emails to your own address. 
so this basically you don't want to create a staging site and then have members who uh, getting emails that they're uh, that they're going to expire or that they're past expiration if they've already renewed stuff like that. So um, so if you don't if you don't create a staging site then it's not something you really need to worry about. But if you do, uh, I highly recommend using that add-on. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Doug. We actually ran into that. Uh, I was getting emails to myself that were like confusing me uh, until yeah. we figured it out. And we actually use a different plugin though. It's not from PM Pro um, to deactivate uh, emails. Yeah. It's called the developer of uh, uh, the developer toolkit add-on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the the first I, this happened on one of my clients' websites, and the first clue was that the email ad address was at, uh, and then the staging site URL. So that's how we're able to figure that part out pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, the the uh, the plugin we use is um, just called Disable Emails. <laughs> hmm. Yep. Yeah, I, I th staging sites are really useful if you want to, especially if you want to rebuild a website. So, let's say a few years from now, my client wants to make some big changes in her business. It's grown or something, and um, at that point, we would definitely want to create a staging website, try out all the changes on there, and um, then make that live after we were happy with all the changes. But in the meantime, you don't want emails going out from there. You just want that to be staging. So that's that's uh, a developer toolkit add-on is very good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of, of things that it has that I haven't used yet. I mean, I was looking through today and you can set it up. You know how you have news feed? I get news feeds, okay? And there'll be an article from like the Washington Post or something, it lets me read the first two sentences and then it's like, oh, you have to sign up, it fades. And this pop-up comes up, you have to sign up. And so I wanna <laughs> read more. And uh, they have something you can do to make that happen on your pages. Instead of it just saying you have to log in or you have to join it you get you get to see the page but just a little bit of it so i'd like to try that on another client somebody with more of a news feed and dean says it's a hundred dollars off for black friday <laughs> so I, I have actually with, I have two clients on it and they're splitting the cost. So it's not so bad for them. And I may be building a site for another client with it too. So then we'll split it three ways to be even better. So. Oh, another thing is uh, if you're only looking at maybe one paid add-on or you want to test it out, uh, I think a lot of their stuff possibly even all of it might be on GitHub. So you wouldn't get the updates, but if uh, 297 a year is, uh, is a little outrageous, if you're, you know, you have, you, you only need one paid add-on, you can consider doing that, uh, yeah. just trying to find that, that code on there, but you will want to check back and manually update it whenever they post a change. Right. But you know, the I just found that the the support was fabulous. It's like I I appreciate that because there's still stuff I don't know, and and I can write them my question, and then they get back to me, and they seem to be very patient with me. <laughs> They've gotten a lot of questions from me, and um, for both sites, because when the first one I'd never built a membership site before, and then the second one. Is pretty complex the additional add-ons information that that she wanted to have, and um, it's been the support was excellent. I can't say enough about that.
Well, anything, anything else that we should talk about with Paid Memberships Pro? Has anybody else used this plugin? I know Doug has. Anyone else? Yes, I have. And I just wanted to say that um, they were really helpful. I was moving the Kaifu membership um, data over from MemberPress into Paid Memberships Pro. And they didn't have, you know, like, there's not an add on to do that easily but they stepped me through the process and how to prepare the, the data and what I could include, what I couldn't include. Um, the only thing that I wasn't able to transfer over was um, member press keeps track of all the financial, um, you know, purchases separately in a database called transactions. Whereas um, it's it's handled differently in paid membership pro, so I kind of had to figure out how to handle that. But um, and I think we're going to have to go through and, and actually customize some of the the history because we want to keep the number of years that people have been a member of Kaifu. Um, so we kind of have to go in and customize that a little bit. But they, when, as you mentioned, their support was really good. They were so patient. I asked so many questions, and um, you know, it, it it was really worth it. I also just wanted to say I was looking at um, the license just now, and it looks like the um, seven covers up to five sites. Yes. So that's that. Actually, it's a heck of a deal when you think of you know three hundred bucks for five sites to get this kind of functionality. It's it's really, you know. Yeah. Oh, it is. I mean, and, and so that's why, you know, splitting it between different clients, it's just, it saves them some money, you know. 